Ring frames. What are they? Where do they come from? My name's Alan Mulholland. I'm a solo sailor. And this is the story of how I built my Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now, I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Well, a small boat like the Wave Rover 650, in order to stay light and strong, relies greatly on, on its engineering. And to that end, I want to thank Andy Dyes, the naval engineer who drew up the plans for me. Now, in order to get that strength, we need to have bulkheads and ring frames. And what's the difference? Well, not much, because bulkheads and ring frames, both are designed to transfer the loads that are exerted on the hull and deck and bottom and distribute them equally over a large area. So what's the difference? Well, bulkheads, such as what I have over here and here, they tend to divide the space up. And ring frames, they tend to be smaller and they're hidden, and they, but they still do the same job. Well, in this video, it's all about installing the ring frames in between these bulkheads to add the stiffness to Wave Rover. As always, there's a lot to do, time to crack on. So in order to line everything up, I'm going to connect a straight line straight across between this bulkhead and bulkhead number one. And to do that, we, I just use the spirit level. You can, I mean, that was the beauty of putting all these lines out with the laser level. So I can just line that up and it's level, strike a line across the top there, which I've done. Now it's a matter of putting putting a straight edge and this is just scrap wood and I'll line it up so that it'll look something like that so I'll just mark a couple of points where I'll put my screws just need to have two um, the re you could actually put the permanent stringer on right here but unfortunately the shelves are bare right now in Prince Edward Island and I can't get the appropriate stainless steel screws I need so uh, these are just going to be temporary for now. Okay, so now I'm just going to grab a couple of screws. I'm putting a fender washer on the back so they don't bite into the wood. I'll come up with a different solution when I get the stainless steel screws. Now, I actually want this piece of wood to extend longer than my line and the reason for that is I'll be putting a string line on here, a real carpenter's trick. So let's see, we'll just put it there, there. Do the same to the other three bulkheads and then we'll move to the next step. Well, now it's time to put our hearing protection on, put our dust mask on, and start sanding and creating that keyway four inches either side of all of our marks so that when we go to glue this up and put the fiberglass tape on, we'll have a really good bond. Fair bit of sanding to do, so, well, time to crack on.
Well, that's that's a pretty good day. I'll stop here and I'll pick it up again tomorrow. I'll do the same. I'll get another four panels in. And these are now secured and tacked in place. You can see a little bit of glue there. Just, just a few spots just to hold it in place. And then I can take the weights away. Now I'll just turn the heat on for the evening and let these cook. Well, Rovers, it's another day. I, uh, I got a fair bit done yesterday. I got these four partitions in and it took about four hours to do. I probably could have done more, but once I get these things glued up, you know, they're tacked in place and I'm using weights to hold them in. Uh, I don't want to be walking around the boat too much because I don't want to upset those glue joints. Um, so today I'm going to put the next four in and I'm going to slow that down so you can get a better appreciation for what goes into it. And it's not very complicated. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the trick is to make a pattern. So this, uh, this material I'm making the pattern out of, it's called door skin. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Uh, what would that be? About... Uh, three and a half to four millimeters. Anyway, uh, I've been using the same pieces of door skin um, for all the patterns. I started with uh, big bulkheads, so I used big versions, but then I'd cut them down. So I'm still using the very same pieces I've been using all along. A little bit of uh, an example of recycle, reuse, um, well, you know, <laughs> as rovers, we do try to get the most out of our material. Anyway, I have a lot to do, time to crack on. So I'm getting ready to make a template here. I've got my old template uh, semi pulled apart. I have a little weight to help hold it on the lines. And let me see if I can get a picture of that. So we're, we're pretty close to our lines here, but you can see that as we look on the side here, there's a significant gap far too big. So I have to pull this apart and I'll just pull this piece off and then I'll re-glue it. So you just want to uh, lay a piece in and get just a rough idea. So it's sitting nicely now along this edge but along here the gap is all wrong. So I'll just make it as tight as I can. Just scribe down with your pencil. I now have a little line along here. It's about an it's about an eighth of an inch and it tapers down to nothing and I'll just knock that off with the block plane. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Just do another test fit and we're looking really good. You, you don't need to make this perfect. If there's a little gap, that's fine because we want glue to get in behind this. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. So next step is to just grab some um, plastic glue from your glue gun. Hopefully this is warm enough now. Yeah, we got something coming out. Hold it in so we're nice and uh, nice and uh, tight to our hull, and it only needs a couple of seconds to harden up. And yeah, we're looking good. So the next step is to get a piece that will go across from the height of the bulkhead we want, which I have marked all along this edge to the bottom edge of this 1x4. So I've already put a bit of an angle on this piece. It'll work just fine and I'll get some glue in that. Here we go. Now over on the vertical side here, I just need to get it to the underside. And we'll just put a bit of glue in there. OK, 
pin. So now that we have the pattern mostly made, we need to we need to mark our let me see, change the camera angle. We need to mark the ends of what we need to do here. So I've got I've got lines running along here, so I'll make a point of saying this is the starboard side number three. And then same up here where the string touches. We'll just make another line. Okay, now we're all set to take this out, find a piece of plywood, lay it on top of the ply and cut the pattern. And that's what I'll do next. Well, the, the next step is just to mark this out. And, you know, I spend considerable time trying to economize the ply, trying to uh, look at it and find out where's the best spot to lay the pattern. So uh, this will be good because I'll definitely have two more that will come out of this piece. So now it's just a matter of tracing this out. And I've made a few annotations that I need to increase a little bit here and increase just a little bit there to make for a nicer fit. Okay, we can take this up now. And it's just a matter of filling in some of these blanks with a straight edge. Okay. Now it's just a matter of taking a saw to it, and we should have our pattern. So the grain pattern is running like this on the plywood, and when you cut across the grain, it tends to tear out. So this is my line right here. So what I do is just take a straight edge, hold it down firmly on your line, and then just take a sharp knife and just score, score the ply. And then just take the saw to it and, and we make sure that we cut on the right side, on this side of that cut line. And that's the piece we just cut off there, and you can see that it's all, uh, you know, it's all ripped along here, but yet where we just cut this, it's nice and smooth. Now, I'll just hit that with a belt sander to bring it right back to that cut line. And yes, before you say it, I know I need to change that next next step I'll do is change that up. Okay so I just brought the uh, partition in and you can see it's it's very good you know on our lines and it's a nice fit over here it's the right height so we're ready to uh, glue this up but I'm not going to glue it up until I get a few more done. Okay so the next two partitions are installed I'm very happy with uh, how they line up on their marks and they're secured in place just with clamping this little 1x4 and then just driving a screw down and uh, using the lines. Over on this side though I had made a, a minor miscalculation on the height of this one. You can see it's lined up where it should be. It's all in line with the string line but here at the bottom I've just put a little shim in and that's okay because once I get the um, glue in just to tack this in place it'll just secure it and then when we go to put the actual fillet on the fillet squeezes underneath which makes for actually a really powerful bond. Okay so we have the last four partitions ready to go here so I have them secured with a clamp and a screw and some weights on the bottom so the next step is just to mix up a little bit of epoxy and uh, tack them into place. I'd like to take a moment to welcome a new benefactor to our bulkhead, Nicholas Zerth. So what is a benefactor? 
Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now, these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, Rovers, that was a lot of fun getting these partitions in. It's one of those jobs where you get a lot of satisfaction quickly because making the templates, cutting the plywood, getting it tacked into place, it takes, well, it goes very quickly and that's why it's so rewarding. But now, now I have to put fillets on each side of all of these and then fiberglass on top of that. And that's going to take a while. I have to work around temperatures. I have to work around uh, the, my other commitments in life. And um, well, it's just one of those things you have to get on with. Well, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Well, Mr. Speckles and I would like to take a moment to thank all the Wave Rover patrons whose pledges of support help power the Wave Rover project. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.